Hey, and welcome back everyone to another video. In this video, we're gonna be in twin motion looking at animations. Now animations were new, a brand new feature as of twin motion 2020.2. .2. And that we have the option of making our own custom animations. It's really great. There's a lot that we can do with this. And I'm gonna show you the basics of how to do it so you can apply animations all on your own. Before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, if you wouldn't mind demolishing that like button, it really helps me out. Also changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. I know a lot of you are new, and if you are, go ahead and do that. It really helps me out. I'm gonna get into it now. As of 2020.2 Twin Motion, we have custom animations, and we can find those in the pullout menu here, Tools and Animators. And under our animators, we have the option of looking at rotators or translators. Obviously, rotating, rotates, translator, moves in a straight line in various directions. Let's start with translators because it makes a little more sense. There are some examples here. We have a sliding door and this is just a door that's just gonna open up all on its own. Once we get close enough, the door will open, it'll translate open. There's another example of an industrial gate, which is for a car entering an area or something like this. You enter this area and the gate translates open. Perfect, easy enough. Great. Finally, a retractable ball. These are kind of cool. So as you get close or something like that, you set a trigger, you have this bollard, which will translate down and it, it's now flush with the ground. That's great. And you pull up, pull back and then it retracts. Great. So those three are considered examples. And in, in that sense, they're not custom. But what is custom is this translator. So I've got this translator tool right there. I'm just going to drop it in and Immediately you'll see there's nothing there except the little icon. And even if I have come over to our scene, I just see translator. Okay. All right. So click on that translator. And then we have all these options to work with. We've got a play option, a distance option, animation, speed, and a trigger. Okay. Looking at this now and nothing's happening. It's just a line and I've got play is on and nothing's happening. Well, we actually need to add an object to this translator to make it animate. In other words, we're gonna bind or link or however you wanna call it, an object to this translator and it will acquire the all the settings of this translator and then animate. That makes sense. So here at the top bar, we see we've got object link. So we can literally, like I said, link an object to this translator. We can unlink an object and then we can pivot edit and this is, just basically saying, where is this translation happening? So if you picture this object as kind of the the master animator, we're going to put in an object and we're going to associate that to this master animator and it's going to acquire the settings and then we can start to do whatever we want with that object. So what are we going to, what object we're going to use? It honestly doesn't matter. Really anything out of twin motion is going to work, but Mm, which one do we want to eat? Let's go with like a phantom bathtub. That seems kind of great. So let's go ahead and just place a bathtub here. And we want to start to animate this bathtub to bring it to life as if it were possessed. So at this point, I, all I need to do is click on this translator. Then I go click on object link. And then I have this target looking icon as my mouse. And I can just click my object. <laughs> and as soon as I do that, you can see what's happening. The, the bathtub has now acquired the settings or all of this information from the translator and it's now being animated based on this translation. Really cool. And you can kind of get an idea of what I mean by master and uh, is because we have this object here, this translator that's serving as the master of this translation. And I say that because if I go to pivot edit and I move this pivot, move this master translator, however you want to call it, it's not going to have any effect on the translation going on because the translation is going to impact the object that I've selected at that object. Okay, so that all makes sense. Let's start to look at some of these different settings. Now I've got play on, I can just turn play off and it's it's just off. It still exists. I still have this, this animation there, but that's it. Now you'll notice as soon as I click on the object, I now have all these settings because it's associated to this translation. And again, it doesn't matter where this is. It's almost like, where do you want to store this icon and store this information? 
Next, we've got distance. And this distance is purely the distance of the animation. So the default is six and a half feet-ish. I have put it on feet instead of meters. The default, that's what we get. Six and a half feet. Now, obviously, you can see I can increase this. And if we turn the animation on, it's going to animate along that path now at a greater distance. OK, that's great. If I click on more, then things start to get interesting. We can customize this a bit more. We've got the axis, the default axis being the Z axis. And if you know, we all know the axis X, Y, and then Z, X being horizontal, Y being vertical, Z being perpendicular. Now, in this case, Z being the perpendicular is default. Let's go ahead and put this on Y and we can see what happens. You can see that both the master animator, translator, whatever you want to call it, that is also being updated along with the object and the animation shown on the object because in reality we're actually editing this entire animator the translator right there so again we can change this to any anything that we want it can be any different axis that's fine going back to translators we've got animation the default is ping pong which means it's going to go back and forth ping pong back and forth We've got the other option of once. If for some reason you just want this to happen once, it'll go to the end and be done. Okay. We've also got loop, which means it's not going to go to the end and then come back to the beginning. It's going to go to the end and then jump back to the beginning, go to the end, jump back to the beginning. It's not going to bounce in between the end and the beginning. But we've also got more that we can look at here, and this is just simply a delay. So if for some reason... There, you're not having this thing constantly happen. Maybe we want to put a two second delay on this. And the idea is that once it starts over, it won't immediately start. It will then wait two more seconds. And we should see that right here. It should wait two more seconds after it starts. And again, because I now have this on loop, it means that the animation is in a sense continuous. And that means there's not really a delay of any kind, even though we do have that two second delay. If I put this back to ping pong, we can see that as this animation comes back to the start, because ping pong is like ping and pong, that's your entire animation. And we should get that two second delay right there. And then the ping pong continues on once again. So that's great. We've got the, a basic two second delay in there. Looking at speed now, it is what it is. It's pretty simple. It's simply the speed at which this is moving from across the translation. That makes sense. Now, can I give you an idea of what this speed really is or what it means? No, because I don't know. I it's at 0.5 now, whatever that means, and it goes up really high. And you know, again, there's our two second delay that we can see the speed really quick. I don't I don't know if this has any units involved to it, but it goes up to 10, whatever that is. And so we can get that translation happening really quickly. And in this case, you can really see the the delay because you know maybe you want to delay if something's moving quickly like this but anyways there we go that makes sense now finally trigger if you've watched my video on doors which i highly recommend you do those are also new in twin motion 2020.2 there is the introduction of triggers and all triggers are is they introduce an area or an event that's required for something to happen that's what a trigger is. And in this case, we have the option of the same triggers. And of course, we've got the trigger on now. But let's look at more. The different types that we have to work with are very similar to what we have with the doors. And that is, you know, the camera, pedestrians, people walking. You've got vehicles or bicycles or things, objects moving or custom path actors. If you set up some sort of custom object or an object on a custom path, then this animation or the doors can open or this animation can be executed and something like that. So that's the idea here. And if we look at the trigger zone, that's at 9.8 feet, doesn't quite matter now, but you'll notice this, you can't really see it actually until I click the, the area there. And we can see as I change it, there's our area. And if you did watch the doors video, we were only seeing a circle that was on the ground, on like the ground face of the door. And that was a blue circle indicating where that trigger zone was. Now, in this case, because it's some sort of animation that has a lot to do with, you know, moving, rotating, doing something else, that this is not just happening on the ground like a door opening. And so we have this in 3D now. So it's, in a sense, a sphere 
in a, like a full zone. And so the idea being that if any one of these objects enters this zone that you've set, then this animation will go off. It will be activated. That's really nice to know. I wish, honestly, we could see this like we can the door trigger, but you know, whatever. I'm not complaining all that much, but this is, this is really where the pivot edit comes into play because if I click on this and I put the trigger zone kind of down here, just smaller, and then I go back to just my translators and make sure this is on, the animator's on, then nothing will happen until the camera or any one of those other possibilities that might trigger this event go into this zone. And so I'm going to enter this zone here in just a second, and there we go. We can see that this starts happening. Yeah. So now we can start to see what the point of this pivot location really is. And that's simply because the object itself is gaining this translation and it's gaining the translation regardless of where it is. But that trigger zone is looking specifically at where this translator is. And so in this case, I'd probably want it to be very close to, if not similar locations to where this object is. Now, you know, maybe you want this object to be here at the end of the translation. Maybe you want it to be there, like really where it starts. Maybe you want it here. And so like as someone walks up to the bathtub, it starts running away from them, you know, something like that. It, it, it can really be wherever you want. But the idea is that we have this trigger that is set to be based on this location of the translator itself. And of course, we need to have it on so it works. But we put that zone here, and if we move into this area, then we can see the bathtub move. Okay, we have gone through all the settings for looking at a translator, you know, and it, it makes sense. But let's continue to put a few more objects here. Like, can we translate a whole bathroom? Can How far can we take this? If we have different pieces of a bathroom here, is it possible to link all of this together? Well, let's find out. So I can go back to my translators. I'll go back to object link and I'm st I now have this trigger icon here again and I can select different objects. And as soon as I do that, you could see that they too also gain this translator line. You know, we can see this from the base animation, the base translator right there, what's happening. And these objects are acquiring that regardless of where they are. And, you know, that's, this is going to be really helpful. And it's because we now have the option of adding all of these things and grouping them in a, together in a sense or linking them to this one translation. And so it's really easy to put those together. So you'll notice here I have everything added but the toilet. And in this case, I want to show you over here, looking at our scene graph, what we have. We've got our translator. And this is really nice because as soon as I add any object to a translator, it becomes part of this nest, if you will. It's like under this folder of translator, the name translator. You can rename this to whatever you want, but without anything here, without any object linked into the translation, it would just be standalone at the bottom as translator, translator one, two, whatever. But now that we have objects linked into it, we see them falling underneath and it's, it's great. And we can see that really simply. It's nice that it's oriented this way and organized this way for us. We have a little icon that tells us what's happening too. It's that's nice, but I specifically left the toilet out to show you what you can do. You actually have control over what's in this translation without having to bind it. Like you don't have to actually add this link by clicking object link and then clicking the object. You can simply drag this toilet, which is not a part of this animation. You can drag this into the translation. And as soon as I do that, you can see that this translation is populated along with all the other objects in the same way, in the same manner. That's great. So you can see them organized that way. And now my guess is if I click on any of these objects, I can start to see, yeah, they're all linked together because look, they're all linked together here. And I'm in a sense, just clicking on the translator. And so, you know, as soon as I turn play on and that I enter this trigger area, which I believe is still over here, then this entire bathroom in a sense will begin to translate be based on these settings. So it's not only a way of translating and animating, and it's also organizing things for you, which is really nice. I'm so glad to see that everything is not just thrown about here and it's all its own kind of thing, but it's actually organized. That's really nice. So I'm going to 
remove this and I can simply take all of these objects and then drag them out. And so I am left with just my translator right there. And maybe I want to delete that because I'm done with this. But now instead, I want to look at rotators. So let's go here now, all the way back to tools, animators, and then rotators. And so we've got the rotating door, which is very similar to the sliding door. If you watch my doors video, we've got a children roundabout and it is what it is. It's spinning. It's doing its thing. And then this is pretty interesting, a lifting arm. And so this will, yeah, again, it's a parking garage kind of deal here. You've got a car that enters this zone. And as soon as it enters the zone, the arm lifts and the, the, the car goes through. These are all examples of rotators. And now we're going to start looking at all of the rotator options, just like we did the translators. They're very similar. So this will be quick. Clicking on rotator, I can click it right there. And so I have my rotator. There it is. And if I look at my scene graph, I see my rotator right there. We've got a nice icon as well. The play is on. The default angle is 90 degrees. So anything associated to this will rotate 90 degrees. And again, I can click more and I can see I've got control of different axes here. I can change Z, X, Y, any axis that you want. Great. And then again, we've got the ping pong. We've got the loop where we got it happening once. If I click on more, we've got a delay. Very similar settings here. Again, the speed, the trigger, and then the trigger type and trigger zone. It's all in a sense, it's all the same. It's the only thing that's changing is the fact that we have an angle instead of a distance. And that's really it. And but besides that, you're determining the axis, which you also determine on the translators as well. So let's start to add some of these objects. So I can go to bind and I can click on this object and I can click on that one. And I'm actually clicking on the scene graph ground. So let's unlink that one because that seems a bit ridiculous. We can click on this sink there. And so these objects are rotating together. And now I can start to change the angle and this is going to translate and rotate more. We can have this go full 360 and in other, in other words, spin all the way around. But because I have ping pong, it's just going back to one end and pinging pong back and forth. And the nice thing here is that you can see these arrows are starting to tell you what's happening. I can change this to loop. And as soon as I do that, then we have our full circle. This is similar to the carousel example. It's just spinning round and round. And again, just like before, I can take these other objects that are not within this rotator and I can just drag them into the rotator. And then there they go. They will begin to spin as well. And so we've got this completely phantom bathroom setup. Hopefully this is not something you encounter in your daily life. So we have this. And the final thing we really should look at is that pivot point. And so this pivot point becomes, in my opinion, a lot more meaningful because it's really giving you that point of rotation. And so I'm going to change this pivot point. And what we're going to do is, you know, if I move this around, then things start to get a bit different. So by default, everything was, you know, kind of centered around this point. And in a sense, everything will still be centered around this point. But the distance between all these objects is going to change because I'm moving that center of rotation. Now, if I <laughs> zoom out here and then turn play on, that is significantly different. And obviously, as I move this around, this is not going to change much. And that's just because I'm moving the whole thing around. But it's when I change the pivot location that everything really does change. And so if I move this all the way within the objects, then <laughs> things start to get funny because everything's going to be like rotating upon itself. And so it, it, the whole bathroom in itself is kind of rotating. So that makes sense. And finally, again, I can change this angle to a different axis and then you know make this look even weirder all the kinds of things that you can do <laughs> hopefully we don't see any of these things really ever but you know it, it is what it is it looks almost like a little fun house here but you know this is going to do it for the basics of translators and rotators in twin motion pretty cool stuff there's a lot that you can do and the fact that it organizes it for you is really awesome and i i can't i'm really excited about having this all be organized as well as animated. So if you like the video or you just happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That helps me out so much and I can't thank you all who have. If you stuck around this long to the video, you get to enjoy this fun house, but you're awesome. Thank you very much for doing so. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.